I move black music instead. I won't even get a mention. I'm the plug, but I still rip out your color coded extensions. Y'all took breaks from records. I was breaking records, so you could break to my records. My collection probably break records. still muted okay we're both on screen both of our mics are live uh welcome Word. aboard everybody this is flying formation uh thanks for tuning in anybody who's chilling in chat feel free to you know ask questions or whatever i'll try to watch chat as uh as i talk to touch my guest today uh touch thanks Yo-yo. for coming through man hey man anytime man yeah Good to see you. hell yeah dude i mean it's been too long um so like yeah. i've been talking to people in this series about specifically like the different scenes across the country um okay so like you know i get each different artist to kind of talk about what their local scene looks like to them uh it's it's been interesting like even just hearing different perspectives from people who occupy the same cities um, right and just see things differently or whatever but also like you know motivations uh talking about new projects um obviously you know getting getting some promo in or whatever for people's new stuff but uh yeah it's just right. been a lot of fun man i've been uh picking people's brains and and i've been looking forward to this one because like dude you you probably have some gems uh to to share today i <laughs> feel like like you know it might be a little bit of pressure saying that right off the top but, <laughs> yeah I'm like well well no man, i like, might you, not <laughs> no that's that's fair enough either way but um uh, yeah man so like you've been dropping singles recently on on youtube right like the yeah. the last like i want to say three over the summer something like that or into the fall now yeah um i think three or four I can't remember. Yeah, man. And they're all like self-produced. Like, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Is there an album coming? I've been, every time that you drop one, I'm in the comment section being like, yo, send this over. Uh, And, and still I haven't got to play any of them on at sick. Mm. So, uh, you know, the, the people might not have heard them, but if they haven't, they should definitely go check out your YouTube stuff. Um, But yeah, is there a project coming or what's, what's happening there? Um, Yeah. There's always a project coming. Um, with uh, like right now i'm kind of uh like i could drop a project anytime like i got enough material but i'm just trying to i don't know kind of get the right situation where it's worth it to drop a project right um like and it's not just you know monetarily worth it but that's um, what I was just I, gonna ask, man. Yeah, yeah no, it, it's it's. I need to have an, uh, enough of a following. Um, a lot of stuff on my end has to kind of be um, leveled up, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do right now. So, like, you know, the how tos online tell us to wait until you've got the following to drop the album. I've seen that that advice. Um, are you waiting for like? follow numbers on some platform Um, or another or stream numbers or like what what's the criteria no it's more of an energy okay like um i'm trying to get people excited right like right now i mean i've been doing this long enough where i've got i've had peaks and valleys right so um right now i'm in a kind of rebuilding re kind of redefinition phase uh of my kind of journey through hip-hop like uh you know i like i i for the last i don't know 10 or more years i've been doing like no producer me like one producer albums right yeah. like you did one like, with dj matto and one yep. with uh, the dirty sample Shouts yep. to him. Shouts to DJ Matto too. I don't actually know Matto, but <laughs> yeah, uh, Matto. who is DJ Matto for that matter? Um, I met I met him through um, Han Solo. Uh, okay. So I mean, we we were like basically introduced to each other. Um, you know, to, uh, Thomas at um, Han Solo kind of has this gift for finding producers and artists and putting them together and making dope projects happen. Um, so he kind of, I was just, I've been working with uh, Ant Solo for a while and every producer he's hooked me up with has been dope. I mean, a lot of them, I've been my homies 
that yeah. just happened to be on the same label but he you know always has a good ear so um uh Matto, um is he like canadian is, like where is he based? no 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 he's uh in, from china oh okay cool. yeah i didn't even have any idea yeah yeah so yeah that's the thing like um or china sorry my bad uh japan i was okay. thinking of t t perk who i did an album with um who was living in china i could, man i might have got these guys these two mixed up because i did the albums back and forth it was a was while t- back too and yeah, yeah it was yeah t yeah. perk was yeah Try you know Mattos, some slack here <laughs> Mattos, Mattos from japan yeah okay word so so but yeah that's uh it was nice like being able to do projects with producers not from canada right like just getting flavor from all kinds of like um like i've done uh work with cats from like belarus um just like getting different flavors man so that's why i just like i like doing those one producer albums yeah makes sense man um so are you working up like well i don't know working up seems ridiculous for a guy who's been around and made as much uh music as you have but like are you building up maybe to uh self-produced album like have you done a self-produced yeah. album that was my other yeah. question that I thought yeah was absolutely okay absolutely um like i started producing real early in my rap career so um i wasn't very good but i had like the right people around me to kind of like guide me so i had the principles right yeah so okay i know i had to do this it's just you know you have to figure out how to get your kick to sound dope you know you got to get your kick to sound dope but it's the journey and figuring out how and getting you know people's advice so i mean i started producing early so my first album i produced like a lot of tracks on it which was in like 98 okay yeah see i wasn't i wasn't awake uh to to you or hip-hop in general in 1998 so yeah yeah i was sleeping at that point man yeah so i was doing stuff um uh with the crew dgc and so um that was me and stray and and, uh dj dice and we were all producing i've seen the logo because dice has something with it on it yeah (laughs) yeah so yeah we were all making beats and like i mine weren't as good like I think Stray made the best beats out of all of us, but um, I knew how to do it. So I dropped another album called Dead Words, and I dropped that one right after um, me and NATO first dropped. Right. So like, I just did it because I was already producing while I, I just discovered NATO kind of. And when I had his beats, I was like, "Well, fuck, these <laughs> I can't put this shit out." Like, and like with fanfare after like dropping a NATO album. So when I dropped Dead Words, I didn't really mention too much about it. Um, it, it, it um, went out on, um, oh, which label did I, did I have that on? I think that was, might've been Nefari or Nefari or might've been Han Solo. You've done stuff more recently oh. with both of them, though, too, right? I've seen um, with Han Solo, yeah. I, um, I've might have done a single with Nefaru, yeah, uh, because but... I do I do a lot of like features, so okay. And I know no cats on that that label, um, so yeah. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to like get people excited about hearing me, and like trying to build my skill. Re- redefine myself from being like oh i feature and you know i do albums with producers to like this is what i sound like like naturally right. kind of like when i grew up this is what my homies taught me and this is my edmonton sound right what would so you I'm say your, to... your like actual delivery your like your rhyme style has changed up i feel like you've had it nailed Mm. down as far as i've been paying attention which like goes back to kind of like when you were working you know with nato more and stuff that was kind of when i uh you know started paying any attention or whatever but like Mm -hmm. i don't know man like you're you have definitely like you know varied flows and stuff but like 
for the most part, I feel like what you do is what you've done, <laughs> isn't it? Like, <laughs> um, well, it depends because if you're I, talking about, I think that's a good thing, man. Personally, because I like what you do. Like, uh, I, yeah. So it's like to me, it, it feels like you're dialed in to, I don't know, to a mastered style. So like, how much more are you trying to tweak it or whatever? You know, like. Well, you could always improve writing. And sure. like, so, I mean, that's just, you can always improve your writing, yeah. especially, especially like writing hip, like rap, because, you know, the end of a rap or lyric is to make it rhyme. So like rhyming is the easiest thing, like the easiest, like f a form of literature um, that you could possibly do. Right. I mean, at its core, yeah, it's like nursery rhymes or whatever you said, right? Well, I mean, like the actual action of rhyming is easier to rhyme than it is to create a metaphor. Oh, it's definitely. easier to rhyme yeah. than it is to create a simile. Okay, it's easier to write. Yeah. So when I'm saying like form of, of writing, rhyming is the easiest part. So like you could always, you got the rhyme. It's what comes before the rhyme. You could, you can you know, improve upon and like experiment with. Sure. And, or doing like themed and, songs and stuff like that, which like you, whatever, yeah. you, you nailed down songs with themes a lot. Uh, yeah, man. Like yeah. I, there's definitely always things that a writer is going to be able to do to continue pushing themselves. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Man. I guess what's your strategy for trying to build this, this energy that you're looking for before you drop something new? Like, um, it's, it's just going to be natural. Like, like I'm going to drop something regardless. Right. I am trying to build a little bit of energy. Like I have a timeline, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like I, I'm not just going to wait for like a, a miracle, but I'm within my timeline right now. Okay. And so you're going to get something, <laughs> right. I'm building up to it. Obviously I'm trying to drop something, you know, there's no set date at this, at this point. No, Okay. no. And that's, that's the beauty of it. Right. Because I went from like, you know, okay, here, here's a, here's the producer. Here's all of the beats, um, put together an album. Right. Right. And it's like, okay, well at that point you're like, I can't really just take my time. Right. Because like these were delivered to me, this, there was an action happened. So it's like, okay, they're probably gonna expect a product. Right. So it's, it's a job basically. Right. Whereas right now I'm just like naturally writing, right? right? I'm just like naturally coming up, coming up. Like obviously I'm pushing myself, but it's more of a natural process. Like my whole, um, my whole process is completely flipped. I just wanted to ask, can we go back to some of these albums that you made with these yeah. producers, like with the solo, uh, you yeah. know, where it was you as an MC and one producer, um, yeah. So like the way you just said that there, it makes me think like, did they send you 20 beats and say, make an album out of this? Or like how, what process did, did that take? Cause like, I know you did one with moves too. Uh, and I did yeah. an album with moves a couple years back too. And like for, mm. for me, it was just choosing 10 of his beats off of his uh, SoundCloud page. Cause I have right. no relationship with DJ moves. Uh, I mean, especially prior to doing that album, I had no relationship with DJ moves. Now I've talked to the guy, but uh, at that point it was just like, I could have been anybody and he was selling beats. Um, right. I imagine it didn't go quite that way for you, but uh yeah, can you talk about just like how some um, each of those albums came together really like that? Yeah, I mean, um, like I, I'll, I'll let you know, like I've done, I don't know, I don't know, at least six different producers, I'm thinking, or five or six, but I, I can go, I'll go through them if you want. Do you want me to go through them all or are there certain ones you're like, I mean, off the top in? of my head, I can think of like four that you did in the last, like that we've talked about, right? Like Matto, right. uh, okay, yeah, the dirty for sure. sample, um, moves, those are all in the last like three years, I think, yep. right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, like, um, with Matto, um, so yeah, Thomas hooked that up and Matto, like, just started sending me beats. And I basically would just 
right over them because they were all good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right? Yeah. And so he just kept sending me beats and, and, you know, he'd send me like four at a time or something like that. Um, but it didn't take long to get all of the beats. Like it was within a, a short period of time. And I kind of went into it. So that um, that's Elect- Electric Sheep. Right. Is the name of the album. And um, some dope concepts on there, man. It was like a Blade Runner theme, right? Yeah. So it's a Blade Runner theme. And, you know, I, I went into it knowing what I was going to do. And so I just put that together like that. So that was like, yeah, just sent me a bunch of beats. Um, there was like, uh, um, so T Perk, uh, he used to live in Canada. He went to high school at um, downtown at a, uh, what's that art school downtown? Vic. Vic, yeah, he went to Vic. Yeah. And he he kind of he kind of knew us when we were first starting, I believe he might not have, but yeah. Yeah. Cause I know he was, he would, he told me about some shows he went to, so he might've known um, about like me and, and whatnot, but um, I, th- I believe he was working with weasel. Okay. And uh, weasel recommended me. And um, so I, I think I'm getting this right because I know Weasel was definitely um, involved. And uh, yeah, so he sent me a bunch of beats and he had like all these samples from this like um, Chinese, yes, it was a Chinese cereal. I'm trying to get it right. But yeah, it was Chinese, uh, like some sort of like show. He had a cassette full of samples and he just like started making beats and sent me all those beats that he made. And I was like, okay, well, let me take a look at this show. It was um, Wukong, which is he, Wukong is like Goku, basically. Okay. Like right. equivalent, a, a different yeah. character. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A little more powerful even. So like infinite kind of strength. And there's been many shows and, and stories and, and whatnot. It's very a very popular series um, in the East. And um, so I just kind of absorbed myself in it and just mimicked his journey because his story is it's a journey, right? He turns, he, he's just like a unruly, very powerful being that kind of needed to get locked up and taught like yo you need to control your powers right don't be so arrogant is it a dope anime like should people watch it <laughs> oh <laughs> should, should i find that shit i like anime. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um it's called journey to the west it, um, oh, okay I've, I've like seen that referenced before that's yeah a, yeah okay yeah yeah so journey to journey to the west yeah uh wukong is, is the main character okay but but yeah he had like a couple companions and so my like alter ego, which was DJ Dirty Needles, um, kind of played one of the characters as well, right? And uh, yeah, so I just I that was like a a story I wrote basically. So each song was a story, right? Was part of the story. It was linear, right? Had a beginning, had an end. I so the entire album had a plot arc. Yep, yeah, well, yeah. it had a plot right through it. Um, I actually did. I can't think of many hip hop albums that do that, man. They're like I remember Mr. Liff had one. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. There's not many that, that have the, the start to end uh storyline that like carries I mean, through actually. I mean, I basically wrote a book, right? That's the way I looked at it. Like I wrote a book, but it all rhymed. Yeah, man. And like because there was like you know, each character, right? Um, like Dusty Crates, who's my producer, Alter Ego, was another character. So they all had conversations with each other. You got a new producer alias now, though, don't you? Um, I feel I like might. those new YouTube got... videos say something else oh, underneath them, don't oh, they? Uh, Vandalay the Architect. Yeah, 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 Vandalay the Architect. That's what yeah, it was, that, right. That, that's my Alter Ego. So um, the stuff that I'm, I'm doing right now, I'm kind of basically embodying 
Vandalay the architect. So do you know of Vandalay? No, no. Uh, okay. Please school me. I'd like to. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's a Seinfeld reference. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not a real architect then, or no, no. George Costanza wanted to. Uh, whenever he would like meet a, like a hot chick or something, he would like pretend he was an architect. <laughs> Dope. And uh, okay. yeah, so he he worked for like Vandalay Industries, and he was an architect. Um, and his name was Art Art Vandalay. Beautiful. Yeah. So next project that I got um kind of incorporates that because what i'm trying to do is just like manifest destiny <laughs> okay yeah sure you know what um, i mean i like that yeah walk uh well i mean a lot of the time people call stuff like that like you know uh i think like i've seen this conversation online recently about like is fake it till you make it the same thing as as word manifesting or as like manifesting destiny or whatever right mm. uh and i mean it's it's just i think a difference in perspective between what people would call those things right but yeah breathing i mean breathing life into something as you're speaking it i think is real man. i mean even like if they are the same whether they are the same or they're not the same it doesn't matter right because if manifest destiny and fake it to your make it mean the same thing, they're still both positive. True. <laughs> either, either way, I suppose the person has, yeah. has made it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cause you can't say, well, fake it to your make it is negative. If it means the same thing. It's just most of the time when you hear somebody talk about it, they're like saying about it like somebody else in a hater way. <laughs> you know? It's, like, oh, it's true. Is that fake it till you make it, motherfucker? It's true. You, I'm trying to flip that script, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm doing. That's why it's Vandalay because it's like kind of sarcastic, right? It's basically what I'm trying to do is exactly what George Costanza was doing, except it's more. It's a looked at as in a serious light. Yeah, right? I like but that. He's man. just being I mean, like, yo, I'm an architect. <laughs> hip hop has a lot of power for that, like for for recreation yeah. or whatever. Um, I think like you know all of it, even the like choosing a a rap name of any type, uh, choosing a moniker to represent yourself, you kind of get to reinvent yourself one way or the other. So, yeah, it might as well be something that uh, carries a little bit of meaning to you, I guess, right? Yeah, and I mean, you have to reinvent yourself. I if like if you're in something long enough you should reinvent yourself like time after time right just to update and and whatnot so i mean i that's me reinventing myself is just letting you know know how long i've been in this <laughs> Where, i was just thinking like would you ever uh like will you release it as as like a separate artist named vandalay the architect or is it gonna mm -hmm. end up on the touch you know spotify and various other streaming platforms um you know um, or on touch Bandcamp, right like wh whichever yeah. one we want to point people to um uh, sometimes I mean, the like full recreation could be like uh i don't know y you wonder what what a, a guy would do coming back with a different name right like uh it's mf doom style right yeah i mean and that's that's the beauty of it is is that i haven't decided but I get to decide. Yeah. Right. That's a good question, you know, but when it comes out, like I'll make that decision probably like I'll, I'll, I'll have that decision, you know, made no problem. It's just right now I don't have to make it. <laughs> totally. Yeah. No, I, I right? mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot. It's no ultimatum. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's just... canceled if you don't answer right now. <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm just trying to say like, it's it's the way i'm working now it's just nice having that freedom totally yeah so that's that's my less point right i got you so less restriction on you just because there's no other producer involved there's no label breathing down your neck telling you when it has to be out uh, exactly exactly like i create the deadlines like i produce i do the mixing i master it which you know i don't recommend mixing and mastering your your own stuff but i can do it <laughs> do, you, um, do you always do it 
Um, I I have been since the Moves album. Okay. So for the last couple of years, basically, um, I that's why I basically have kind of uh, slowed down on on features and like kind of working with other people, just so I could get this education in, so that when I come, you know, when I come out, other people are going to be excited about, you know. Hey, I want to jump on a touch project. Not I want touch to jump on my project. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm just trying to get myself to that level where I'm not doing features. People want to feature people want to like, come on my, you know, my shit and be like, oh, yo, this is dope. Beats dope. Right. Do you find it hard to get features? I feel like I've seen people um, featured on your shit. I mean, no, yeah. no, not at all. Or like you're but, always on posse cuts with everybody yeah, across yeah. the map and stuff. Like, I don't know. Don't you feel like no, you're part no. of that crowd? I mean, like I do a lot of features, right? But my albums barely have any features on them. These last ones have been like, I mean, not all of them, but the, the two we just talked about were very like, you know, that's your artistic vision. It's tough to, to ask exactly. somebody come exactly uh, under on, on a track where yeah you have it, a real uh metaphor going or whatever right it, exactly and that's the thing like these albums they i mean sometimes they take a couple months of just studying before i even start writing yeah i wanted to ask that earlier man like do you just put the fucking like if you're making an album that's entirely about blade runner yeah, how no, many times no. did you watch blade runner like no you, it's not even how many times I watched it, it's, it's what did you watch and what did you read? Like I read Electric Sheep, right? Um, I watched every single Blade Runner. I watched all right. of, all the iterations, you know, if there was a live action version uh, of like, um, like even 1984, I watched like a play, like I watched everything, you know, and I read as much as I could. So that's why I'm saying like, like, to be able to like do that without any deadlines, right. Is a lot less stressful and a lot more fun. Right. Because I, I take, I take my craft seriously. So if someone wants to do an album with me, I do an album. Right. I'm not just like, you know, here's, yeah, here's 16 here. Yeah. 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 No, I'm like, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is the concept, you know, um, here's some samples da, 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 da. you know, okay. I got to read for a month. Um, like that, let, um, journey to the West album. Like I studied for like maybe a month and a half cause there's lots of journey to the West. And then I had to write a story, right? Yeah. yeah that's no easy feat at all. And then you had to make a rhyme and then right. just, yeah, <laughs> make right. it work over top of beats. Yeah. Right. And I, I, I did a video for, um, that whole album. So like it was every song was a, a different video, but it was like stitched together. It's one long video and I shot it myself. I, I never, I didn't even know how to use the gear. Right. I just got the gear and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to bang this out. <laughs> and it was supposed to be um, a play. I got a grant to do a play, but COVID hit. So uh -huh. I couldn't get no, no actors or nothing. And, Were you gonna uh, do like Fringe or like where where would the play have um, place? Well, that uh, it probably or that kind of stuff. Like that, yeah, yeah I, yeah. I wasn't in charge of that part of it. I was just part of the play. Fair. Yeah. Right. Right. So I had an allotted amount of money. So instead of like getting actors and, and this and that, I convinced them to give me like a couple grand, and I bought like a camera and like some camera gear, like a gimbal <laughs> right and i just like because i still the grant was still good right i still had to produce something right right so i shot the video as so it, a play it got approved prior to covid then covid yeah. hit and then yeah. you had to make the so like exactly. did they give you some leeway with that like were there was it um it was it was it was like weird because i was like talking to the dude in january i was like okay this is what i need he hit me back he was like 
no, nah, this is a play, dude. Like, we're not just going to buy you like camera gear and lights. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. COVID hits. It's like fe- uh, February, March. I haven't heard from him. Haven't heard from him. Like May, I get an email. Okay, you have a month to and you know, we the grant was supposed to be like 20 grand. They gave me two grand. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And a month. Uh, yeah, and a month. <laughs> yeah. So, but the the video, this is the part though. The video, every song was a one shot. So that whole I did a whole album video. And every song was one shot. Dope. So like there was no like cuts. Like I did the whole verse. And that was that story album, right? So I mean, this stuff takes time and it takes energy. So I just need to be able to be the best I can so that I can take control and be like, okay, now I have some time. I want to work with you. I want to work with you. Like, you know, Word Burglar, what's up, man? I haven't talked to you a bit. Let's do, you know, um, just, you know, moves. I got some time, man. You know, let's, let's work. You know, I want to be able to dictate that. Like yeah. right now, I'm just kind of building that. Yeah, makes sense. But I mean, uh, so is that a matter of going more independent or a matter of being less reliant on grants? Or how do you get rid of deadlines and still be able to... I don't know, get your music out to people, but get finance into um, any of it, you know? I mean, there's step-by-step instructions on doing that. That's not the that's not the issue. The issue is getting the music to a level at which when you do put it out, it's unquestionable. Right? Like and I'm saying I I, I don't I'm not trying to be like Jay-Z or like, you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is the mix has to be good. The production has to be good. The master has to be good. The verse has to be good. The, you know, everything just has to be up to standard. And so that's what I'm working on. I'm working on the production aspect. Like I could do whatever with rhymes. I've been rhyming long enough. It like, they used to call me, um, a battle rapper right and then they were like you're a nerd rapper and then they were like oh you just do stories and then it's because i've done so many different things yeah you could do any of it I, when you were talking <laughs> about just, <laughs> your like uh the one shot videos i was like mm-hmm. you just bored of rapping like is is rapping too easy uh no i mean the only reason why i did the one shot video is because it was supposed to be a play where, and there's no so cuts it's like a, a live element almost yeah okay i, I get it i mean right. and it's all dope uh but it's just like so conceptual everything you do is like so so concept based that it's it, it, yeah it's it, it sounds like you're just like fuck what else can i do with this like well a lot of this stuff is so concept based is because i'm working with another party right so if you come to me and you're like yo touch um here's these dope beats let's do a pro let's do an album and i'm like okay i'm not gonna slack right i'm gonna do the best that i can and the best that i can is to actually do a proper album like okay let's do what's the concept yeah okay make sure the beats are all kind of you know they the congruent um you know let's paint a picture with this so like the producers have been so dope that I've had to like up my game and like come out with like crazy concepts. Right. Because I mean, dirty sample, you know, um, the Maddo's beats were just insane. Even like T perk who I didn't even hurt, you know, I didn't even know he made, he was like more rock. His beats were crazy. And I was like, okay, well, and NATO, like, what am I going to do? Right. Like, (laughs) Yeah. yeah i mean you definitely have like a high bar to jump over with with dope beats being given to you or whatever but like yeah. dude i don't know um i guess your new get... stuff the, the new singles on youtube are more just like bars and 
boom back yeah. kind of you know there's it's not real conceptual yeah. stuff there or whatever but i mean not to say the bars aren't clever or whatever they are but uh it's uh yeah it's not as as academic maybe or <laughs> no <laughs> it's it, yeah. it's me being me right as like i'm trying to like show people no okay i know what you've heard right you've heard me you know maybe you haven't heard me but the people who have heard me I know what they've heard. It's like, yo, this is actually what I do. <laughs> By the way, like at my most natural, these beats are from 182 West Side, Edmonton, like uh, from the EPS and the, you know, ASR 10 and it, S950. Like speaking of people who know about the history of production, <laughs> we got Dice and DVL both in chat. They, they say, what up? <laughs> yo, <laughs> Shows what up? to these guys. Yeah, these guys are pioneers, right? Hell yeah. Like, like, I like DVL basically was the first producer that I mimicked, right? Like his beats were like, and I still, if you live in my beats today, I mean, DVL probably would recognize. Have you heard all this stuff DVL has been recording lately? He's been over recording with Deeswax for, I want to say like, two years solid now uh, Deez was telling me earlier today they got 60 tracks in the vault right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I heard some stuff last year actually um um i was at a spot and i got to i got to hear a, a bunch that he's yeah. been working on so yeah, i was right. like that sounds kind of like my shit <laughs> it's like that's where i get my shit from right Hell so yeah. that's why i'm telling you man it's like the stuff i'm coming up with now is real edmonton like this is Edmonton. The dudes in the chat are the pioneers, right? That's where I got my shit from, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so like it's, it's a thing. <laughs> that's something I've talked about with, with other people from, I don't know about Edmonton necessarily, but like about their city sound, right? Like, would you say mm -hmm. Edmonton has a sound? Is there, is there a specific style of hip hop that Edmonton excels in? I feel like it's very. Um, I think em I sound like Edmonton. I mean, I agree. Um, so, like, if you, that's what I'm saying, like, and my sound comes from Edmonton, Edmontonians or people that, in, that lived in Edmonton, right? Like, literally. So, does Edmonton have a sound? If it does. You're hearing it right now. It's my sound. Yeah. Now, now, okay, that's literally. Now, let's pull back. Does Edmonton have a sound today? Right. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, uh, it's got a lot of talent. I can tell you that there's, yes. Yeah. There's a lot of dope Absolutely. motherfuckers coming out of Edmonton. Um, Absolutely. Whether I'd they like make to say similar sounding music though. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, it's hard to say, right? Because there is a lot of influence from outside of Edmonton. Yeah. Like, a lot of it right from all kinds of different regions so it's hard to say when you were talking about like being the sound of edmonton that thought crossed my mind that like so now it's so easy to access every sound from everywhere on the internet mm -hmm. 20 25 however many years you want to take it back it wouldn't have been so there might have been less influence coming into edmonton mm-hmm Yep. But you guys were still listening to hip hop, you know. It's Absolutely. not like it happened in a vacuum. So. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I yeah. know, I know where the what influenced the Edmonton sound, like in in my era, especially, like maybe in the old school, like the older school era. I I was kind of just an observer, so I didn't really, you know, like I I started as a dancer, so I was dancing for a lot of these crews, right? I didn't know a lot about the the beats, but. You know, I, I heard like Stetsasonic type of, of stuff and, and BDP and, and um, what else? Like, um, I don't know, like, like in my era, I heard a lot of like mugs and like RZA and like um, DITC, um, right. that kind of influence, right? But the actual like nits like when you got down to like the sampling and, and stuff like that that's where I, I think 
Edmonton was a little different. Like, it was just a lot of more like spacey stuff. Okay. Uh, a lot more like weird a- abstract stuff. Yeah, right. definitely. I mean, yeah, the art rap is coming out of the prairies. I mean, then yeah. and now, I feel like there's uh, yeah, there's some music you can definitely tell. Yeah, there was like havoc drums and like stetsasonic type or like cool Keith type, you know, samples. <laughs> so, you know, so when you when you first got into making music, man, like how did you how did you even begin to to like have access to to studio equipment and stuff? Like how did you start actually recording? Because uh, like. Um, yeah, it would have been a big hurdle back in the 90s, I, I figure, right? No, nah, it wasn't really a huge hurdle. It was weird because, I mean, everyone that I hung around with had a sampler. So someone is up, eventually going to sell so a people sampler. People were still doing the home studios one yeah. way or the other, yeah. Well, I mean, they were making beats. Like it wasn't a home. So you had to go to a studio, right? Like you couldn't record, but <laughs> like you can make song. the beats at home. Sure. Yeah, you make yeah. the beats because you got ASR ten, you got EPS, you got S nine fifty. All you needed was an Atari with an S nine fifty. Simple, plug it in, maybe. So, like, everyone I knew kind of had something. So I just ended up basically. Whoever wanted to sell something, I bought it. I bought, uh, I think my first sampler was S950. And um, I knew people who used S950. So I learned off them like uh, Relic. Um, who else was using the 950? I think Chris Groove was using the 950. Maybe. Just to those guys. Been too or, long or, since uh, I talked to either of them. Or, or Dice. But yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so it was, it's just like I hung around people that were in the industry or in, you know, the scene. Right. So I just learned off them, basically. Dude, I've got a theory that I've been trying to work out as I talk to different artists about uh, the more biographies and stuff that I read and the more artists I talk to, the more I'm starting to think that it takes a couple generations to create a successful musician. And, and so I wanted to ask you, like, are you from a musical family? Did, did your parents, I don't know, make you love music? <laughs> like, um, I mean, my dad uh, was a DJ. No, he's. See, this, this is what I hear from everybody. Everybody who is doing this at any serious level is like, yeah, my dad was a DJ. My uncle was a, he was on the radio. My, this guy, that guy, like everybody seems to have somebody from a generation or two before yeah. who, who helped a little bit. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like I, 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 I never, like I never, I never lived with my dad though. Okay. And I know, I, I know he never like showed, you know, I wasn't like, you know, under the wing watching yeah, yeah watching him dj or anything like that i just know he was a dj okay um maybe it's no. maybe it's right in the blood then <laughs> no you, you know what it was it's just like um you know i was like well i was my mom's only child so i just hung out with you know other people all the time i never had to like really like take care of a brother or a sister or whatever, whatever. Right. Right. So, I mean, I was always like hanging with, with homies and, you know, homies were doing music. So that's what you did. Right. You just did music. I mean, it just can't, it's, it was just hip hop. Right. Like. And like that's my you, favorite way to hang out with people making music. <laughs> right yeah. There, I mean, uh... honestly, like it wasn't like a thing that you consciously like, like we grew up break dancing. So it was just natural to like DJ, rap, produce. Like it was just a normal thing. It it wasn't like an extracurricular activity. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but I mean it was just like, yep. 
hip hop is something you live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every one of us lived in their bedroom studio. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. What was it like a niche like in Edmonton? I can't imagine that the 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 it was the main culture or whatever. Did it feel like mm-hmm. you guys were the outcasts living in your bedrooms making hip hop? Um when I started doing it, it's it was kind of popping off like it was starting to get like it was like when i really started rhyming it was like 92 93 um like 94 like those are like golden eras right so hip-hop was like fully you know good to go like but i know when i used to just break dance right when i wasn't like rhyming or anything like i'm talking like elementary there would be like commercials on this on the television station i'd be like enough of this rap crap and they would like throw a, all this vinyl in the garbage and be like one old you know whatever the radio station is like yeah hip-hop was not like well endured. dude i'm thinking like even 20 years after you're talking i mean hip-hop in edmonton like it's definitely like a lane there are people who do it or whatever but there's definitely people out there who like still think that it's like you know rap crap or whatever like there's and and there's probably more of them in a place like edmonton than there would be in like you know toronto or fucking new york for that matter (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's funny you forget that because you know when you hang around like hip-hop cats in edmonton it's a pretty close-knit community and then all of a sudden you could like step out of that community and it's like oh yeah i forgot yeah <laughs> oh yeah this is alberta y'all don't like that <laughs> yeah yeah we're, we're in the land hip-hop you know? forgot man that's i always yeah. talk about this place like it's 20 years behind the rest of i don't know everywhere else it seems like but yeah but the good thing about it being behind is that you could travel to the future right all you gotta do and bring back secrets yeah <laughs> yeah that's it's it's facts it's facts like all you gotta do is you go to new york you go to like la or whatever new york probably the best place chill there for like a month or two and you come back and you're you basically went to the future right that's and awesome. you know it's true because you know the trends are going to slowly catch on to edmonton it's always happens so yeah that's what i like about edmonton like in what major city can you travel to the future? <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Um, dude, can I, you mentioned that like 93, 94 was golden era for hip hop. Um, and I would agree like that's definitely golden era for hip hop in general. Um, I've had the conversation with a few different people uh, from Edmonton about what Edmonton's golden era for hip hop was. Do you have an opinion on that? If we're being Edmonton specific, hmm. like when was it most ah. popping? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I mean, most popping. I'll tell you this. Um, we uh, there was a point in time where you could get paid to open for a major artist as an indie Edmonton like hip hop act because right. right now you're paying to play right now I would say around 2000 like two um you could get paid oh, maybe a little earlier maybe about 2000 2001 yeah yeah about 2000 i would say about 2000 and 1999 okay you could get paid to open for like guru <laughs> or like you know because the the promoters appreciated hip hop they were like yo this is make this could make money this could make money now Popping, I think, is being able to um, monetize your sure. your art. Sure, that's popping. There's a lot of different ways to. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying right? words over that, here, man. That's popping. <laughs> now, now, the best era 
I would say would have been like. I guess, yeah, music 90, wise, 90, right? Like 90, when was the best music coming out? Mm. Is that is that is that how you were gonna answer it there? No, no, no. I'm just saying best era. Best era I would say was like 1990. Okay. Um yeah, 1989, 90. And I was like more of a spectator then, but I know like the crews, they were all like crazy, just all different. Um all had skill and like they were celebrities in my eyes. Right? Like if I saw one of those cats in West Edmonton Mall, I got the same feeling as if, you know, Rockham or somebody would have walked by. Right. <laughs> right. It's like, yo, yo, that's MC da da da. That's da 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 da. You know, yo, he raps, you know. So, like that era for me, I loved it. Right. After that, I got into it. Um, like, you know, as more of like a spectator and, and you know, a hip hop dancer. And things Thanks, change. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just out of curiosity, were you um, familiar with the Untouchable crew? I, I watched that documentary or whatever and talked to Arlo about, uh, you know, about them a little bit. Uh, when I when I touched on him, were you like you talk about being in a breakdance crew in the early days mm -hmm. in Edmonton? Did, did you were you familiar with them guys? No, I wasn't. They Fair. were like, Fair enough. Um, they were when I started when I started breakdancing, I started in grade three. And that's when they were kings of this city. So I had no clue about who yeah. these people were. Fair enough. Right. Um, like they were they were like they were that they were them <laughs> when I started break dancing as a little kid. There's no way I, I knew them. I was way too young, right. but I, I heard they were legends, like literal legends. Like I heard stories of da da da, you know. And I didn't, I I knew, you know, growing up, you're like pointed out, oh, you used to be in this crew, da 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 da, but right. I'd never like seen the crew together actually do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. So I was listening to your music earlier today. Uh, mm -hmm. You have a song called I Don't Write. And um, mm -hmm. it made me want to ask you, like, is that real? You don't write anything? You No, um, that's not what that referred to. Okay. So the whole song is I don't write. And then every line after I don't write is a form of communicating that is not as simple as writing. From a communication, right? it's not as simple as writing. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that song again. Um, yeah. and, and then I'll probably pick up what you're putting down. But um, just listening like, to the, the, the title of that song and, and thinking to myself, like, like this is a man who I've seen you freestyle, man. Like you, mm. so it made me wonder, like, is he actually just getting in there without writing stuff? Is that what we're talking about? Is this the one take over guy? No, no, <laughs> like, okay. no. I, I mean, it's like I even break down like the f like the forms of essays, <laughs> like exposition and da 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 da. I'm like, I don't write. I write essays. Yeah, it, so, I mean, line after that. Definitely so it's some just of like, those songs. I can tell you're not freestyling. I, I guess yes. Um, yeah. So so I don't write is 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 just me like breaking down different forms of writing. And saying, I don't write, but I do this, but I do that. Every line is just, you know, I write op-eds, you know, <laughs> I write plays, I write plays, da da da, da you know. Right. Where so, and that's that's why I kind of want to, you know, the stuff that I'm on right now is similar to that. It's just more bars, right? Because it's like, yo, the, the last uh, track I just dropped um just like last that, week or something wasn't it? uh it's a couple of days ago that's extra i don't know if i uh -huh. saw that one if it was just a couple of days ago i dropped it on saturday okay on my on my youtube all right man but that's uh -huh. like um like i got a line in that where the last line is like seven syllable multi <laughs> and like it rhymes with every rhyme 
from the flying from the above. Tub, right? Yeah. And it's just like, as an MC, you, you you probably understand what I did there, but you know, a regular person would be like, what the hell, seven syllable multi? It's like, yo, I had to like, first of all, find a phrase with a that ended in multi and seven syllable multi has to have seven syllables right it can't have six right? <laughs> yeah yeah it can't have eight so i had to go through all the numbers be like one syllable multi, no three five six six syllable multi worked six syllable six syllable multi worked but i wanted to go one more seven syllable multi Right. You got me tapping my fingers to count. So, <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. And it's just like, yo, so seven syllable multi was the perfect line. And then you had to write, now I got to write seven syllable multis that go with that, the whole 16. But yo, if you're just a regular dude, you probably, be, you know, what the, I don't know what this guy's talking about, but you might think, you're not yeah, writing he's for the regular dudes, though. That's, yeah. yeah. But it does sound like just bars, right? Yeah, Sounds well, like that's, just that's the beauty of it, bars. to do it and smoothly that's, enough that, yeah. That's my technique, right? Oh, is yeah. to, like, give it for the regular dude. Hey, man, how's this? This is for you. But, you know, for somebody who is actually going to listen, going to be technical. like, yo, seven-syllable multi. How the hell did he rhyme that at the last line? Right? Obviously. What did I do? I took it from the top. Rest in peace to Sean Price. That that sounds to me like some Sean Price shit. Using a bunch of small words or whatever. Like he he would break shit down in ways that would be both technical and just like baseline, easy right. to interpret and easy to. He's but also a he's yeah he's using six or seven rhymes a line or whatever. Yeah, he's a master, and that, that's what I'm trying to do is just kind of master my technique, right? Sharpen the sword. Be like, oh, yo. Yeah. You know, I need I, I need to like make beats that fit my style and master my technique over those beats. Makes sense, right? man. Can I just crack off some fast questions for you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, stuff I ask a lot of different people that I, I've uh, just like getting different people's opinions on. Uh, do you get more fulfillment from being on stage or being in a studio? On stage. I don't like being in a studio. I don't write in a studio. I write out in nature. Okay. So are you and constantly the, typing lyrics into your phone then? Like as you walk around yeah. kind of deal? Yeah. Yeah. I usually go to like, uh, like a pub or something and like chill in the corner. I'm the, I'm the dude in the corner that you're like, what the fuck was this guy doing? I'm Hiding on my in phone. The shadows like a ranger in a fantasy book yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and I just like kind of observe society and just kind of like maybe the, the beat that they're playing or whatever song they're playing, maybe hits me or whatever Fair but I, I don't like being in the studio at all <laughs> fair enough um dude you've been doing hip-hop on the prairies for a long time and there's not always a lot of like great venues out here to perform at so i mm -hmm. know that a lot of people that i've talked to have various different stories of crazy places that they've ended up performing so i wanted to ask like what is like the weirdest maybe place that you've ended up rapping at hmm. or even yeah. just like a weird place that you've ended up like a show that didn't you know that yeah raise an eyebrow yeah whatever man um the weirdest place i would say i think i was in uh fredericton and I believe it was like a school of some sort. It wasn't, you know, I can't really think of like a super, super weird place. Just like I've performed everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like places you didn't, you wouldn't think that that a hip hop show is going to happen at, right? Like whether it's like, mm. like for instance, here in Lethbridge, uh. there's like a pizza place that holds rap shows all the time or whatever, right? Like I, I know it's kind of the same deal in Edmonton or whatever. We we've mm. all performed at coffee shops and we've performed at, you know, like I, I performed at a cyber cafe in in 
Edmonton at one point that was like a bunch of computers in a basement. <laughs> yeah, and they're yeah. like, yeah, this is your stage. Get up there and rap. It's like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's the thing. Like, man, the the community right now in the last, you know, 10, 20 years at least has been that active where they just find little spots everywhere. And yeah. I, I know you know that, right? Because, you know, you've you've done the, the internet cafe show and the, <laughs> yeah. i met lee you know. reed at it though so it was dope <laughs> and the, i mean i've performed at people's houses yeah you know like like House i've done parties these yeah. yeah you know i mean it's just like a weird spot with like people so i mean that's what i like it's just like we find spots man it's like okay this one shuts down next one opens up this one shuts down don't worry right. like the, the the black dog basement was the craziest spot like that because that's one of those spots you wouldn't expect unless you're in the know right that you know that was the longest hip-hop night i think ever that's still where scratcher goes down isn't it um I th- maybe yeah actually yeah it is i could be it wrong there. i don't know I'm, no no yeah, you're right i'm out of the city now it, it was there a couple of times but yeah that was just they would every yeah, week just said would, that's where scratcher is yeah 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 man they would throw obstacles at us every week like this wouldn't work one week this wouldn't work one week like there was one week where we had to go through the tv <laughs> like for sit you had to run your sound through the tv yeah like our turntables what? through the tv because this speaker didn't work and this speaker didn't work we're like okay well there's a tv on the wall i guess <laughs> we'll it will go through the input and out the the volume of the tv yeah <laughs> so i mean like you just learn to adapt, right? You can do shows anywhere. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, how about this one? Would you want to be as famous as Drake? Um. <laughs> Kripal was on here and he was like, who wouldn't want to be as famous as Drake? Isn't that what everybody's out here to do? And I was like, I don't know, man. I don't think that a lot of people f- are <laughs> trying to do that, really. But uh, I'm just trying to think if that was a trick question. <laughs> I mean... Answer I mean, it how you like, man. Answer yeah, sure. Like. Uh, yeah, man. I, what? I it's don't, not like uh, I can flip the switch and make it happen. I'd like to do it for I you. Mean, but, uh, the is, though, like, it, it gotta too, though, right? oh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, though, like, it got to come with the money, too, though, right? Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, definitely okay. the, the money and the fame. Sure, yeah. But, like, okay. so... It's, <sighs> to make Could've. music that's going to go that big... Okay. Would you be willing to compromise artistry though like i i don't feel, oh. I feel i feel like i know the answer to this right like i couldn't make music like that sure like i don't know how i agree drake drake is a master <laughs> at what drake does and there's a reason yeah. he's in the position he's in yeah okay yeah i can't do that yeah fair enough man um here's a good question what's uh what's a quality that most successful artists who you know share you know, a lot of different artists. Um, uh, I would say tenaciousness. I like it. I mean, yeah, it takes a little bit of uh, resiliency to keep doing it, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I like yeah. That. I mean, you gotta like, you gotta go one hundred percent all times right those are the that's those types of people you know who those people are <laughs> you know Definitely. they don't stop yeah the ones who you can tell are uh fully invested yeah 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 you can tell them. uh here's something that kind of comes off of that actually so i've had artists on here talk about like in various different contexts talk about like artists who do x are hobbyists the word hobbyist has been thrown around in a in a vaguely negative fashion, you know, okay. uh, like anybody who doesn't want to be as famous as Drake. Maybe I don't know if this actually was it, but like is mm-hmm. a hobbyist uh, and it's, it's or like people who don't like social media. Somebody said this people who don't like using social media. Those guys are hobbyists, so they'll, they'll okay. never make it. What does the term hobbyist mean to you? Uh, and and like what makes uh, the difference between a hobbyist and a, an artist or a, okay, I don't so, know, a professional maybe. Okay. Well, I mean, that's depends. Like, do you want me to explain what I think they mean? No, I want you, I want your opinion on it. Like, um, 
uh if somebody called you a hobbyist would you be offended by it um i think so yeah i mean a hobbyist is somebody who collects stamps sure or well i mean who does something for a hobby right who does something uh Uh, like who's so to me to me a a hobbyist might imply just that an artist is making art for the sake of making art um and and so an artist you know they might not be uh yeah i think in the context of being an artist like what's a hobbyist in the context of being an artist and to me i mean that's somebody who's making art who maybe isn't concerned with how successful that art is when it's released to the public um the 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 definition of hobby is doesn't have art in it like an artist is completely different there's no like like there's an okay, artist, but an artist there's a hobbyist. would you say that an artist has to be a business has to be business minded too no okay no so I right. think a lot of people would tell you that they do, right? That in in, in I mean, to, an to artist, be a successful artist, anyways, or whatever, you're going to have to incorporate well, business into it. Yeah, um, if you want to make money off your art, sure. Then yeah, you're going to have to so, know, and have I guess some that's, business sense. That's the difference to me is like a hobbyist doesn't give a shit about making money off of it. Yeah, but but a hobbyist. Um, can be any like a hobbyist like i said it could, a hobbyist yeah, it could it can be, be someone who who, who who like makes uh bottles in in or chips in bottles right so yeah, paints in the basements yeah. or whatever else for sure it can be a hobby right yeah right like uh like it, it depends are you i'm just trying to separate an artist from a hobbyist because i don't understand how those could get kind of mixed in Honestly, I don't either. So, uh, like, I'm trying to wrap my mind around like, why these people throw in this term hobbyist when they're like, like no, I'm not that. Those guys are hobbyists, you know? What, I'm, I'm so like, is is Van Gogh a, a, a hobbyist? It, like, the painter Van Gogh, was, yeah. was he a hobbyist? Yeah. I don't gonna, know enough I, about Van Gogh to answer that question. Was Van Gogh... I, okay, um, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a scenario. Is he I'm one gonna, of the ones who died before he ever got famous? I'm going to assume he died before he made any money off his art, like most artists in those right. um, times. So let's, let's just establish that as a baseline. Okay. Would he be a hobbyist or is he an artist? Like, would you describe him as a hobbyist? Like, would you be like, if he was also a like a shoesmith or whatever, like if he was, you know, somebody who's also doing some, day job and then he comes home and paints his pictures yeah i mean i it, by it's, by it's, my it's, understanding of what a hobbyist in the art world would be yeah. um yeah that sounds like a hobbyist to me okay but, okay then that would be where we differ okay because i would call van gogh an artist well i would too definitely if i'm just like talking about him in any other context but (laughs) but if we're talking about the idea that he was making his art his entire life with no intention for it to make him rich or famous um then it might have just been his hobby uh like yeah you know what i mean but you're you're coupling art and money and, and richness like the purpose of art is not to become rich and famous it's to be the best at what you do or to create i would agree yeah so like this being rich and famous has nothing to do with art but a lot of people think it does man a lot of people uh are in art because they want to be rich and famous and it i get the impression uh, that they think that anybody who doesn't is a hobbyist i, I guess. don't know is, is, i don't this know this is I'm, I'm boiling this thought in my brain as we're having this conversation but i i i've just arrived at that at that that like i feel like yeah, these guys are saying anybody who's not out to make a bunch of money off this stuff is a hobbyist. So like, I, yeah, don't, know. I don't know. It sounds I like don't, I don't know anybody like that. Like, I don't know anybody who does art to become rich. I know I mean, people. There's who easier ways use, to get rich. That's I know sure. people who use their art to be rich. 
to become rich. I know who people who are smart and can see opportunities and take their art and monetize it. I know lots of people like that. I do that. Sure. But you think they'd be making art regardless one way or the other? Yeah. Okay. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Like, I, I, I like that. Why, I hope like, that that's the truth. I, I why why would you make art for money? It just doesn't make sense because there's easier ways to make money, especially yeah, in Alberta. Way we're, we're guys ways. in Alberta. We could pick up shovels and make money yeah, easier there's, than there's, making art. You go to the go to like uh, up north. Go to the rigs. Yeah. <laughs> you make mat. Like you ain't gotta like. <laughs> Yeah, Kill no, yourself, I, and I, I mean, I've said that to people before, actually, in my life. They're like, hey, "Don't, don't do this for for money, man. This is a money pit." You know, like, uh... no, KRS One said that. I can't remember when, but I remember hearing him on Rap City or something. He was like, you know, the, the interviewer asked, like, oh, "What would, what advice would you give young rappers?" And he was like, "Get a job." <laughs> <laughs> yep, I took that to heart. I was like. Yeah, of course. Don't be stupid. Work a like, job and do yeah, this on the side. Don't just, <laughs> you know, like do your art, but don't forget about, you know, life. There is you a know? school of thought. I've heard people say, though, that like, oh, no, you got to be fully committed. You know, you got to quit that day job. Go full in, you know. Uh, yeah. Wendy you... Day wants you to move to L.A. in a car or whatever. Just live in your car. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah. You know? If you think you can you know, monetize what you have enough to like live. And then I don't see why you wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that makes sense to me. That's the dream right there. (laughs) Yeah. But, but you have to be smart, right? You have to know, okay, now I'm at a point where I could quit my day job. Don't like first quit your day job. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's a big gamble. Big, big bet there. Um, um, yeah like um, make sure you're good <laughs> <laughs> uh i mentioned social media as i was ranting there about uh who is or isn't a hobbyist Did, what do you think about social media is it a pain in the ass or is, is it a blessing oh it's a pain in the ass yeah it's 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 the opposite of everything i grew up on but um it's a necessity but yeah, like I grew up on, yo, anonymity. Don't show your techniques, hide your skills, you know, keep your skills within your crew. You know, um, I grew up on like, don't brag, don't, don't flex, keep DL. That's, those are like, that's what I grew up on. Right. Don't trust. Um, so more so like the game is to be sold than rather than told then like yeah just keep a keep a low profile secrets to yourself yeah don't don't get crazy you know don't be like don't stick out you know like move with silence and don't trust like anything digital <laughs> like the, like literally that's what i grew up don't trust anything digital right and be humble and you know the opposite of everything the, that they tell the opposite, an artist to do right now it's the exact opposite. Yeah. Right. Like you're supposed to work on your, on your album and pop out with it. You know, I'm obviously a rollout, but you know, like show them the process of you making the album and picking the sample and sure. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you have to do that now. Or you have to at least come on something like this and talk about it. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Right. There has to be some, some open door to it. Yeah. Right. And that, see, I don't mind doing this cause you know, I like to, pontificate about things that's the thing right? is it's just kind of talking rap to me yeah. like talking rap philosophy or whatever yeah yeah like i don't mind this um but just like going online to like show people that i'm here yeah i don't like doing that right so when you see me pop online i usually got some for you that was me exactly, man. I looked at it and was like, okay, well, I don't want to just like post pictures of myself being a model in various different locations or whatever. <laughs> like, I mean, cool. If that's, if people are pretty do that, but like, uh, so other than that, I was like, okay, hey, why don't I reach out and start talking to people? And like, that's a way to like create content. I was saying this earlier 
today mm-hmm. too that like to me content isn't the dirty word like i've been on mm-hmm. threads a lot lately and like all these artists are on there talking about like i'm not a content creator i fucking hate that word i'm a musician and today i i i I don't even know what you call it. I threaded, I guess, uh, saying I posted, I'll say that saying, um, you know, content isn't a dirty word. It's not inherently bad to be a content creator. You can be a musician who is also creating content. Like I, I said, like music is a form of content. You know, a TV show is a content, like anything anybody puts out into the world is content. It's always been a word. Mm. Um, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it, it feels I, weird people being scared by this. This like, oh, I don't want to be a content creator. It's you know why though? Because it sounds fascist. <laughs> well, I think what it really comes down to is that people like when you think of a content creator, you're thinking of somebody who like has made their entire persona off of posting pictures of themselves on Instagram or whatever, right? Like like an influencer mm-hmm. or something is is I feel like mm-hmm. same ballpark term and people don't think well of like influencers right like um well i just think of the word i don't think of the person behind the word it's the word content is basically um taking all different forms of art and categorizing it people hate to be categorized so that's why i'm saying it sounds fascist it's like content content give me content right it just the way it sounds that's it people are cool with it it just sounds bad yeah i mean 20 years ago if we would have been talking about like the content of a nas album you know oh there's a lot of content on there like he talks about a lot you know or whatever like it it wouldn't have been taken negatively at all but but now yeah it's taken this connotation where people think of some vapid talentless person who just is creating content that means nothing and does nothing or whatever yeah it's been memified yeah basically but there's no reason that content can't be fucking meaningful or whatever right yeah exactly exactly it's just don't call it content because you're gonna piss off an artist sure okay (laughs) yeah (laughs) all right here here we are making art i'll chop i'll chop many artistic (laughs) clips of of this yeah see (laughs) this was something I really wanted to ask you, man, because in the past year I've heard, and, and I, you know, here's my bias. I agree with you. You're the best rapper in Edmonton. I, I give you my opinion. You give my vote. Uh, I've heard you say it. I've heard other rappers say it. I'm not going to mention who else, but other people who have been on fly on formation have even claimed themselves best rapper in Edmonton. Um, and, I just wanted to ask, like, what should the criteria be for declaring oneself the best rapper in a city? Um, First and foremost, you have to say Edmonton. You can't say my city or the hood. You have to first put 10 toes down and pronounce the word Edmonton. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Otherwise... I don't believe you really rep for the whole city. All right. Say the word out yeah. loud. And like I've said it in every single thing I've dropped in the last few times. Why? Cause people are afraid to say it. Right. Which is cool. I'm contrarian. Do you think they're right? afraid to say it for the Edmonton crowd? Or are they afraid to say it for the world crowd? That's going to hear it on streaming mm-hmm. being be like, where the fuck is Edmonton? The world crowd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're not, no one's afraid of Edmonton. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm with you. Yes. I, 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 yeah. Um, you know, so, I mean, I say it, I say a lot just because I know people don't like saying it. Right. I like to be different. Right. And I, ain't, you know, I'll say whatever I want to say, <laughs> you know, whether I am or not, I'm saying it. that's just deal deal with it i guess you know i've always said it i feel that mc should rep where they're from i don't know i it's always been weird to me when i like check somebody's spotify bio and it says they live in some city i know they don't i won't get into specifics but yeah i see random people who 
it's like we i know where you're from i mean maybe we don't know where you're from maybe the public doesn't know but i i know where this person <laughs> is from and that's not it but yeah uh it happens yeah. a lot i mean to me it's it's funny because most people don't know where it's from so that's, that's why i say it so much it's because it's like ah these people don't know <laughs> it's just funny to me like i just i'm kind of trolling right? right but i mean there's a lot of dope MCs in Edmonton. I'll tell you that. And there always has been. Yeah. Always has been. Like, there, there wasn't a time when there wasn't. There was not. There was always dope rappers in Edmonton. Is is Edmonton special for lyricists? I've, I, I can't decide. I mean, I've been paying a lot of attention, like, coast to coast to the Canadian scene for mm-hmm. the last four years kind of everything that drops i'm listening to it and analyzing but like prior to that i wasn't really paying a ton of attention to canadian hip-hop i'll be honest uh and so like since doing the show i've been like there's a lot of dope motherfuckers in edmonton but it might just be because i know them all because i live there um you know what i mean like so i'm familiar with the dope motherfuckers in edmonton but yeah do do you think that there's a abundance of them actually like disproportionately to other cities i mean there's there is an abundance of everything disproportionate to other cities just because of our lower population so i mean we're gonna probably stand out to us more like everywhere you look there's a rapper right but i mean we're a pretty small city big fish small pond thing then yeah right yeah i just think that um there's a lot of talent and it's like right now, the way things are going, like it's, I I can't really see like somebody being like repping for Edmonton and like becoming famous and putting the city down. Like I could see somebody getting out of the city and forgetting Edmonton. Yeah. Right, because that's just the natural path that I see most rappers take out of Edmonton, right? So, you know, we got a lot of talent, but I mean, it's talent everywhere, right? It's it's just as easy to just slip out of here, you know, go to TO or something, and then establish yourself. I I I, I wouldn't say we're special. I guess is the moral of the story. Sure. Right. Yeah. But there's a lot of talent. And if people like figured out how to put that together, could be a different story. Yeah. And probably that same thing could be said for, you know, Winnipeg or Calgary yeah. or wherever else. Right. Like there probably yeah. is a ton of talent and it would just be a matter of people yeah. organizing and uh, I mean, I, th- I think it has to do one with one another and building the, Yeah. It has to do with crews. Like, you, you go you, you you just look at like New York's blueprint, right? It was crews. They all had crews, right? Juice crew. You mean look at the blueprint, right? like look at the actual map and how the neighborhoods are separated? Well, like, just how they because I feel popped. like the neighborhoods played a big part in various yeah. different crews coming up in New York too, right? Yeah. The, yeah. But yeah, some of them didn't or whatever, yeah. Some of them didn't, right? Some of them met just through like doing shows or something. Yeah. Right. Okay. Maybe this, they both lived in Brooklyn or something. Right. Or maybe they didn't take the train. It's it's not far from the Bronx to Brooklyn. Right. So, I mean, the blueprint is there. You can't really come out of your city repping your city unless you have like a crew. Right. A crew of other like like you like a like a hip hop crew or like a, a hip hop crew. A, a I'm crew talking who's like, gonna I'm well, talking, here wait like an I'm artist like, crew or like a crew who's gonna support you. I'm, no, I'm yeah, I'm talking an artist crew. I'm talking um boot camp click. Okay. Okay. I'm yeah. talking hieroglyphics, Wu Tang. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's how you do it. Like look at Toronto. When they really started popping, it was like figures of speech. Right. And we knew figures of speech. Yo, that's a crew of dope MCs. And you're like, that's Toronto. 
you gotta have you can't just be one dude strength in numbers yeah 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 i think i agree with that man i'm always pushing that you know dope mcs should connect with dope producers and should connect with other dope mcs um yeah unfortunately yeah. crews are impossible to keep together yeah <laughs> ego is a hell of a thing right like uh it's just like ego personalities all kinds of shit like it's too hard you gotta be all for the art and life is fucking tough i think that plays into yeah. people's crews breaking up is just like how fucking tough it is to get by everybody's yeah. scraping by by the skin of their teeth so it's like everybody's stressed out everybody's yeah. uh, got a back burner mm. at some time it's because they've got to pay a bill or it's priorities deal right with the drama or whatever right yeah yeah, yeah. one yeah. reason or the other people duck out yeah man but that's the that's the blueprint though it's right there look at griselda right yeah buffalo yeah. right we know a buffalo like we no one was checking for buffalo come on come on no, before <laughs> them i can't think of mcs from buffalo I, I mean i'm sure there were some but right and it's just like this that's the blueprint so How do you? Yeah, no, I think I feel like that has to be organic. That has to be. It does. Eight guys who are fifteen right now deciding that that's what they're going to do. You know. It, well, it doesn't have to be. It can be orchestrated, but you just have to be able to have somebody to orchestrate it, and then all the people, <laughs> like it's the blueprint is there. It's there. It doesn't have to occur organically. It's way better if it does, most likely. I don't know if it's possible, though, because the difference between Buffalo or New York or, you know, L.A. or whatever other places we mentioned crews from and like Edmonton is like 20 million people, isn't it? Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. I don't know. There just might not be the fan base to put anybody on the map the same way out of Edmonton or out of well, you know Saskatoon or whatever, right? Well, that's what I'm saying about like one person because if one person tries to escape, they don't really have to like rep, right? They've escaped. But if you got a crew, they're automatically going to rep, right? And that's the way people start looking at Edmonton or looking at, you know, another city, right? That's what I'm trying to say is the difference. Yeah. Okay. Right? I, I understand what you're saying. Crews are powerful for promotion. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. The, it's the whole promotion and you have different personalities who have different fans and, Oh, I like this guy. Cause he produces, or, I like this guy cause he's a dope MC or yeah. this guy's got the dope voice or whatever. He got the chick, you know? Well, and you just also have like, you know, say five different people with five different of their built-in friend groups and the people yeah. that they all work with. And, yeah. you know, this guy yeah. is a bartender, so he's promoting it left, right, and center. And this guy's, you know, out on the street promoting it left, right, and center. Like, it, the more people that you have spreading that word, I think the easier it is to build that momentum or whatever. I, I was always jealous of, like, my friends in bands and shit because it's like, well, of course you guys sold out the show. There's five bands on the bill and there's fucking seven of you in each band you yeah. know like you each sold exactly. two tickets <laughs> yeah exactly the, blue, the blueprints there it's just egos yeah egos egos personalities um i feel though like as everybody gets older we lose those egos don't we i don't know like mm -hmm more so not necessarily everybody but I, I know personally i am man like i wouldn't have been doing this in my 20s just promoting a bunch of random people across the country for no real fucking reason um other than that i think it's a bunch of dope music that people should hear you know what i mean like that's that's genuinely why i put after the smoke is clear together because i was just like why is nobody putting together a hour worth of canadian music every week like what, what is going on here somebody's got to do it so i fucking I did that. And now, you know, Dice and Baggy Lean are, I have actual DJs doing it with me and shit. Nice. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. So, uh, it's, it's been uh, a fun journey or whatever, but like, yeah, I think just like people don't know how many dope people there are out there. And yeah. 
Yeah, I know. I got, I got all that wax too. I got enough Canadian wax. That, that was my, um, whenever I go to a record store in a different city, where's your Canadian section? Right. Dude, you probably have one of the best, like you used to do. Do you still do missing link? I've talked about missing link mm. recently and not known whether it still happened or not. It may be, I don't, I don't do it, but I did give them my, uh, catalog. Okay. So they could be using it. You donated your wax catalog to. No, station? I made, I made a bunch of shows for them. Okay. So I made like, um, 15 or 20 different shows and I, t I uh, made sure that there was no dates that it was just missing link but they're all like very well done and professional and so they could be recycling them when did you start was, doing that show like dice tells me that he at one point was like yeah. helping with mixes for that like yeah. a while back I don't know a long time ago back I don't know how long ago yeah, there was two iterations of it. So we, um, me and NATO started it like, I don't know, 2000 and 14 or something like that. I can't remember. It was a long time ago, okay. but we did it for like a few years. Like I think, um, and for people who don't know, this was a radio show on, Edmonton College Radio, which I can't remember the call sign of right yeah, now. 88, 88.5 CJSR. CJSR, that's the one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like NATO, it was me and NATO, and then me and Dice, um, and then me and Shaolin would every once in a while um, contribute a mix here and there. Okay. And um, And then I stopped. For like maybe three years and then i restarted it by myself and i did it for another like three or three years until like COVID hit okay. and, and i think that was the last year and i that's when i started when i picked up the camera basically and i wanted to learn photography and be able to shoot videos so i, I stopped djing stopped rapping and I just concentrated on that for like a couple of years. Yeah. Well, so I stopped rapping. I did drop a couple albums, but I severely cut down on my rapping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Over. So you cut back on rapping over the last few years. That's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, I did. I totally like. How many albums like, have you put out in your life? Um, at least twelve or so. Okay. Least from what I remember, maybe a little more in that ballpark though okay but like by cut down or stopped rapping like the the year i was like okay hey, I, I gotta like concentrate on videos and photography i had dropped the um 1984 album with moves and i did like probably i don't know eight eight or more features and that was me stopping <laughs> and then <laughs> the yeah. year after that Slow i was like stop. yeah i was like yo people were kind of hit, hitting me up for features and i'd be like no <laughs> sorry you know so the feet because i was really trying to get my video um and photography just mastered right so that now i do everything i do all my videos edit all my videos shoot them all nope. um i do all the art for my albums right um i do all my photography do photography so those two years where i cut down on rapping that enabled me to become more of an independent artist because i was able to like and you've still been able to drop albums every yeah, year yeah. anyways yeah. yeah i think last year was like i maybe did like two or three features at the most and that's the least i've ever done so that was like a real rap holiday <laughs> And if I'm missing out on some of these features that you're doing, like, do they, uh, the they thing never... is, is I hate Spotify. <laughs> I hate the, the entire platform and how they fuck artists over, but mm -hmm. it's so helpful in me finding the new music that comes out every week. Right. Like, uh, so I was just going to say like, if it doesn't pop up on Spotify, I'm probably oblivious to it. Um, right. but like, 
I think since I follow you on Spotify, if they were putting the albums you're featured on on there, it would probably pop up on my weekly release radar or whatever and tell me it was out. Um, who have you done features for in the past couple of years? Um, I feel like I've heard some. Man. Probably um, played yeah. some. Um, I know. Oh, I was on the Word Burglar album. Um, this is just a good time to shout uh, other artists yeah. out across the country too. Really, this question, <laughs> softball question, to shout people out. Yeah. So I mean, uh, it's it's tough to remember because they all kind of get jumbled. <laughs> Fair enough, man. Yeah. Um, but who else? It's been a. Yeah, let me look at my iTunes here. Yeah, I have that yeah. Time Bandits album here. Okay, that yeah. Would have been on at sick at some point. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man, I can't it's remember. It's tough to find features in iTunes. Yeah, well, whatever. Um, yeah. Uh yeah, man, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I, I do have a section of this show. If you've got another 20 minutes for me to ask you questions, is that cool? Yeah, I'm cool, man. Okay, so let's go. Uh, how important is a good stage show? I ask a bunch of how important questions. Um, it is of the utmost importance. Utmost importance. Okay. Yeah, out of it, out of everything. That's the most important aspect of being an artist or being a In my musician, opinion, yes. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I like that. How important is getting grants? Of zero importance. Zero importance. Okay. Um, because, like you said earlier, keep a day job, right? That's your no. angle on that? or No. Because um, a lot of people would... What, well, what do you need a grant for? Learn how to do it. to like pay bills though don't people use grants well, for that i don't know i've never got grants but i'm, I'm saying like okay like then, you want to aren't there you people wanna... out there who are like but how would i pay my bills if i can't get grants i'm saying you want a video grant just buy a camera that's that's what i'm saying i'm not saying it's like diy it rather like, than hire uh, people yeah just yeah. Fi figure it out I'm with it. Um, and I'm, I'm talking about my experience right now, the, the mode I'm in. Uh, as soon as I learned how to like do all my own shit, the importance of a grant became zero. Yeah. Because all, I, all, all the grants I would apply for was like video grants and like recording grants. So that you could pay people to do the shit yeah. you didn't know how to do yet. Yeah. Exactly. Makes yeah. sense. Um. <laughs> these are interesting for you i've seen you perform where you're your own dj uh how important is it to have a dj on stage or hype man let's roll these both into the same mm, i think it as a, a rapper yeah as an mc um i think it is Honestly, these questions, you can answer them from like your perspective, like how important mm -hmm. is it to you to have a hype man on stage um, or just from like the perspective of like, should somebody who's coming up into rap thinking that they're going to be a rapper try to have a hype man? Like, I don't know. Okay. What, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to answer these. Um, like I'm going to give advice to people. Okay. Uh, a hype man, not important. DJ important. Um, because what you don't want to be doing is looking too busy. So if you're on stage and you got to go back and hit buttons or you got to adjust shit on your phone and, or, you know, to cue the other song or da da da. Yeah. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> nobody wants to see that. It's unprofessional. It looks horrible. Um, I need to make one caveat because one time I saw Buck 65 play a sampler and rap while mm -hmm. he was playing the beat that he was rapping to. And I was like, that's fucking cool. Well, I've that's part of the performance. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm saying like a DJ as in a technical aspect of your show. Yeah. Like uh, who's going to play your music, right? If you play your music, all good. Like me, I do. I don't have a DJ because I DJ. Right. Right. And or, I've uh, I've seen you perform sets that you've like mixed together, you know, like like a DJ would, and put into mm -hmm. one 
sound session to perform yeah. over top of, right? Yeah, and like if I could have a DJ, I would. But try to get a dude to bring out a couple of Technique twelve hundreds and a rain mixer nowadays without getting like at least two hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, good luck, right? You're not. You're probably gonna make two hundred bucks off a performance, you know, with merch sales and whatever. Yeah. Right. Can't pay it all to the DJ. I'm uh, saying when you're opening, like, because I'm assuming most people are not headliners. Yeah. Um, speaking <laughs> of opening and not being a headliner, and I have heard you talk about this in lyrics. Uh, shit, you said it on a song that you're on with me. But um, how important is opening for big name rappers when they come through town? Hmm. I mean, how important is it? I think it is thinking in my mature self. I don't know when that, what that line was <laughs> that I said you did the song, but I would say. I think, I think on the track be, with me, you say something about being a close and something about how, like, you know, the faceless MC you're dissing is an opener and you're a close. Yeah. I think was I mean, or something along those lines. Yeah, I mean, I would say it can be very important because um, if you bring your A game, uh, it's very easy to be like, hey, follow me nowadays, right? And there's you're building your fan base and digitally right there. Yeah. So gets you in front I, of a lot of people. Yeah, I think it's um, it, it can be very important. Now that comes it, back it, to it, having a good stage show, though. Too. Yeah, or it can be detrimental. Right. Right. Could be the worst thing you've ever done. Makes sense. Um, <laughs> how important is writing music that fits current trends? Um, I think it is like trends. <laughs> I don't like the word trends. That fits current. Uh... I, th I, th I think it's important to update your, your style. Okay. I think it's important to um, definitely listen to current trends. Sure. Um, just because maybe you're missing something, right? If everyone is mixing their album this l level and you're not, maybe that's something you should consider. Yeah. Right? Now, to change your style to current certain trends, I don't think is of the utmost importance if your style is timeless. Yeah. I would agree so, with that. Yeah. So my advice is make sure your style is timeless. Figure out how to do that. <laughs> timeless advice, man. Yeah. Um, this kind of plays off of that. How important is writing love songs specifically? Um, I've heard I, both sides of the spectrum on this answer from people. Um, I, I mean, I've written love songs, but sometimes you wouldn't even know so i mean i don't i don't think there's anything wrong with writing love songs um i don't think it's important Fair but enough. there's there's nothing i mean especially if you get like creative with it yeah you know i i don't mind writing it i i, I write love there's lyrics. ways to write a dope love song yeah yeah i mean maybe it's not gonna sound like uh d'angelo right but whatever yeah, fair enough. Um, how important is an MC's fashion? Um, it's important to not look like ass. <laughs> Especially if you're on stage. Yeah. Like, unless you are, like, huge. Like, you have, like, you're, like, you're selling out shows. Right. And then it really doesn't matter. Yeah, then you can come out looking however you like. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, don't don't come out looking like purposely like a bum. You know, to be like contrarian, I would say, I would say just you know, buy some new gear. Yeah, so somewhat important. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, how important is a local reputation? A local reputation? Yeah. Um, As a it's a very. It's a very good way of getting um, an international reputation. 
So I think if you build a local reputation, you're on your way. Yeah, makes sense. I th- there are some artists who like are looking at it like they can just completely bypass their their local scene or whatever right now with the way that the internet is, right? But uh, yeah. I mean, you I definitely tend to could. agree with what you just said. Yeah, you could, but man, don't you like performing in your city and that kind of stuff? And being, you know, yeah, yeah. Being having accepted. like a hometown crowd. That's like, that's, that's what I would say is because you get to practice your, your Yeah, tough uh, to skill. have an immaculate stage game if you haven't run around somewhere yeah. performing. You, right? you want a friendly crowd to practice on, yeah. right? You come home, you go to, you go on tour, like, and you're a rapper. It's all hostile environments. Yeah. Right. Because rap is a blood sport. You come home. It's like, ah, Okay, everyone likes me here. <laughs> right. So yeah, it's important. Home turf advantage. How important is having a manager for an artist? Um, probably very important. Okay. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, then maybe not very important because people know who you are, man. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> when you think about Canadian hip hop, like you're one of those guys that you think of. So, uh, I mean, if you are like. If you've you done know, what you've done with no management, I don't know. I mean, honestly, it's probably very important if, if you are, you know, you're making like a hundred grand a year. Sure. You bet you probably should have management. So once there's least, money coming in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At least you can afford management. You know? Yeah. I think that makes sense. I, I've seen that same sentiment for artists. Just get a manager when it's, time to get a manager when yeah. yeah you actually have something to be managed or whatever yeah um how important is pressing vinyl um i think it is one of the most important things you could do in hip hop okay period can can you elaborate on it um okay or just vinyl I mean, I don't disagree. I just, you know, no, no, I'll want, to, want to hear your opinion on it more. I'll elaborate. Hip hop vinyl, especially Canadian hip hop vinyl, is some of the rarest items you could possibly have. Why? Because no one can afford to press more than 2,000 copies. Real so it's always, yeah. always going to be small runs. Why? Because if it's dope, then you got a very valuable piece of um, of work of art, yeah. Right. So that's the like that's one side of it, right? So Canadian vinyl, very valuable. Hip hop vinyl specifically, very valuable. Okay. Other part of it, vinyl is hip hop, right? Hip hop was created from from journals. vinyl. Yeah. Right. Um, first juggling, then sampling, mm-hmm. cutting. So vinyl is hip hop. And whether it can be recreated now digitally, it doesn't matter. Because we have Serato, well, we can scratch MP3s, we can, you know. Um, I'll, I'll say this, like. If you live hip hop, vinyl should be extremely important to you. Dope. Okay. Uh, how important is listening to the legends of hip hop? Um, it's just as important as going from grade one to grade 12 in high school. I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you like try to get a job and you don't have a high school education, you'll get a job, but people aren't going to really think highly of you. Like, like, I like that. (laughs) Yeah. People will think more highly of you if you've listened to the legends of hip hop. Yeah, I agree. Um, Here's something. uh, I don't honestly know how I feel about this one. How important is the ability to freestyle Um, for an MC? It is of the utmost importance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
or used to have a dope stage show or for used um, to prove that you're an MC or like what's your opinion on why that's so important? Well, you never know what situation you get yourself into. Okay. I mean, I've had people come up to me and just battle me and shit, you know, after or before a show. Yeah. And I mean, so MCs, rappers are the only people who people come up to and put on the spot like that. I feel like with like the only artists who get put on the spot and like, you got to do your thing right now for me, or I'm going to be unimpressed or whatever. Right. Uh, that's why you want to be able to freestyle. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Okay. Man, everyone's got a camera phone. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you're the first one I've asked this one too. Uh, but this will be the last of the how important questions. How important is an MC's political leaning? It is. <laughs> That's a fun to answer. It's tough right? because, yeah, because. I think it now um, is important because um, people are more sensitive to politics. Mm -hmm. So it's, do you want to alienate people or do you want to um, aim yourself at a certain demographic? Right. Some people choose the latter right like um who's what's that homie um nova's man tom mcdonald yeah 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 right so he chose right he went all in with that shit yeah, <laughs> right? yeah so did. so that was an important decision for him because that's how he eats yeah. right now if you don't want to aim yourself at some but some particular demographic and you want to eat off everybody it's very important that you are very delicate with your political um, takes because right. you'll end up nowadays, like back back in the Wu Tang days, in the like Sons of Man days, and and the Killer Army days, you could be a socialist, a communist, you could be, you know, whatever. Yeah, you could be right. Any, yeah. Yeah. You could say a whole any bunch of, shit, of heinous things right? hating on any number of yeah. different groups. Yeah. And and we just loved the music. We really like no one was like, oh yeah, you're this. Like uh, I didn't care. A lot of like, shit got the pass, yeah. Yeah, like and I mean like even like Killer Priest and like his his crew and whatnot, like uh um what's his name? Um Shabazz the Disciple. Like a lot of these cats were like super, super like Christian, right? And it's like I didn't look at Shabazz the Disciple as Christian rap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. It was just super dope hip hop. Right. But now it's kind of people are, are tuned into that. So you got to be careful. So because just society in general is so politically polarized right now, have we created an environment where artists can't. Because like you said, artists want to be aware of it and, and either play to one side or the other really meaningfully play to one side or the other or if you're trying to eat off everybody which is what most of the like promotion uh tips or whatever for an independent artist are going to tell you you need to eat off of everybody you can't be you know you need to be mass marketing to everybody and whatever uh have we created a, a, an era where like artists are afraid to talk because I don't yeah. know. I don't know how much like political stuff I hear in most of what I'm playing on at sick. Like there's definitely some of it that is hyper political, um, you know, that really like is trying to spread the message or whatever, but yeah, you know, you it's know, a what, weird place to be in man with art muffled like that. You know what it is, honestly. Um, it's not that artists are like, afraid to say things it's that they say too much not in the form of art mm. right because it's too easy like that's why like i kind of got off twitter 
like I was like one of the first Twitter adopters because I was like, you know what I missed because of my mind state and I didn't trust anything digital. Yeah. I missed, missed out on the MySpace days. Right. Like I got there late when it was about to close down. So when Twitter popped up, I was on right away. And I just realized I was just giving my bars away Mm. because you had 140 characters and I would spit out a, a bar to the point where on uh, the Fly album, I have a track called, I think it's 140 characters. And I just went through my Twitter thread. Yeah. And I put, I put every bar in the, in the. That's a really good <laughs> idea, actually, man. Like I, I, I've talked about, um, well, I mentioned the, the album with moves or whatever. I wrote that in mm. 10 days and a lot of it was the shit I was ranting about on Twitter constantly. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. So uh, I was there when it was only 140 though. Right, because yeah. I think it became so twice I remember as when much. It was one forty. Yeah. yeah. So it was like one. You you had one bar. Yeah. Right. So now it's just there's too much bars you could let off on Twitter and like IG. Mm. So these rappers and these artists are letting their bars off online. Not many are. I'm one of the very few. I'm always I'm I'm what, pissed what, off by it, man. I'm always like heckling people. Like we're a bunch of MCs. How come nobody uses their fucking words anymore? Everybody's on Instagram modeling, but you won't come over on the threads and say anything. Like, yeah. But well, <laughs> I I get well, it to the, a degree, of course. Well, that's the thing. Like they'll say like controversial shit. Yeah. Right online, but not in their music. Right. Right. So it's too easy just say some controversial shit and it's all out of context because maybe it was a bar maybe you're like yo this is dope shit yeah and it's only <laughs> half serious yeah yeah you're you know and then it's just out of context and out there yeah it's like yo you should have put that you know in a verse drop the verse on on twitter whatever you got to do it's definitely so more leeway if you put it in a verse on a verse you yeah. can on a verse, people, you know, you can kind of be like, ah, no, nah, that was just like interpreted. Yeah, like, yeah, or, yeah, you know, like, you know, that's not really yeah. what I meant by that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but I think that's what's happening is it's startling people. And they're just like, all these artists are just, it's too easy to just get something off online right now. Yeah. You know, just like, I have an, a genius thought. It's like, boom. When back in like the nineties, you had to write it down, go to the studio drop it <laughs> like <laughs> yeah yeah definitely uh a different era <laughs> for sure man yeah yeah like what are you gonna do like rut like you, you just it's just too easy to get some dope shit off online and think you're cool and I, that's the issue it's not that's me every day on threads <laughs> go check my threads feed it's full of it <laughs> um, but uh here before i let you go man i got like mm. a few more questions uh they're mm -hmm. just kind of wrap up stuff but cool. um can you describe the edmonton scene just edmonton hip-hop scene um dispersed um it's widespread yeah Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, can you name some artists from the Edmonton scene who people should be up on? I mean, you know a lot of artists who are outside the Edmonton scene, so if you want to show people out that are beyond the, the borders of your city, do that too. But uh, I like to ask artists to just, you know, help spread the spotlight to other dope people. Yeah, I mean, uh, anyone who records that up in arms recording. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Brothers Grimm, Kripal, I'm Cats. Um, There's a bunch of cats, man. Like, I live right above it. So it's busy 24 7. Have you um, heard the uh, the new Brothers Grimm album? Uh, excuse me. Have you heard the new Brothers Grimm album? Kripal told me. Is it the Kripal one? Thing. Yeah. I heard, um, well, I've, I've been to a couple of their shows. So uh, I've heard a bunch of tracks. I don't have the album, though. I I got I got the tea though. I wondered if you, you know, had the <laughs> had the inside uh information cuz you you do you work at Up in Arms? What's your relationship with Up in Arms Studios? Um no, I used to uh and be an engineer there. Okay. Um but there's better engineers now that work there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. And uh it's it's like 
basically, you know, probably the best hip hop studio in Edmonton. Yeah. Um, gear wise, engineer wise, um, it's got like a main studio and a studio B. You could just rent out and, and kind of bring your homies and and record. Um, Big ups to NATO and all the other uh, yeah. people working over there because yeah, man. you're very right. Everything that comes out of there is top notch. It's uh, as nice as sound quality gets, really. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right on. Um, any plans for shows or tours coming up? Uh, this one's more for people who have just dropped an album, I guess, but I still mm-hmm. ask you. Um, oh, yeah. Shout out to Arlo Maverick, too. Um, he just dropped an album. Yeah, Blue Collar. Um, Blue Collar. Yeah. Um that is a dope album. Um yeah. but yeah. Um that's the whole mission, right? Like I said, the stage show is the most important thing. So what I'm doing is I'm recording songs right now that I think will be fun to do live for me. And uh just using my um newfound skills with visuals. And uh, just going to put a a show together, basically. And hopefully by next summer, um, have some spots booked. What goes into writing a song that you think will be fun to perform live? Is it just energy more so? Or like, are you conscious of leaving kind of spaces that could be call and response or whatever, stuff like that? Like, Yeah, that that stuff, just making sure, you know, the the, the hooks are, um, you know, doable. And like one thing, one here, I'll, I'll... I'll throw a tip to some rappers that are, that is coming up. One thing I always did was write my songs so I could perform them. Yeah. So I don't have like hooks that come in too quick. There's no overlappy shit. There's nothing like if I need to breathe, I put that in the hook. Um, now times are different. People rapping over their bars. Yeah, they shouldn't be. <laughs> Fuck those guys rapping over your bars. Don't so, rap over your bars, rappers. So, That's my tip for you. <laughs> so I don't I don't know if you should take this advice because one one homie man a while back I was like reinventing and this dude kind of gave me an offer of like, yo, let's let's write some bars together, see if we do some shows. I was like, oh why not? It's been a while. He's interested. Let's see. And uh I, I I busted some, this was just me kind of vetting him out. Da, da, da. So he, he like approached wanting to do like a yeah. MC duo kind of yeah. A, okay, yeah. project. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Dope. And um, so I was like, okay, well, you know, we got together. I started, I was spitting and he's like, you don't spit over your verses. I'm like, no. And, but he said it in a way, like I was crazy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like he couldn't comprehend like she like it was almost like well how do you do shows yeah how do or like it was kind of a how do you get the crowd hype attitude and that's when i understood oh this is a new generation i guess because wow. that is greek to me what you just said <laughs> yeah yeah i mean yeah, like i i was the crazy one like <laughs> like oh okay but um, yeah, it's, it's new, so maybe, I don't know. But yeah, Oof. I'm just doing tracks that I just like wordplay. And I like, want to hear my beats live, right? So um, that's what I say, just tracks that are fun for me to do. Dope. Yeah. That I know there's no like super pressure, just like have fun. Makes sense. Um. Yeah. So in 2023, what's the best way for people to support musicians who they like? Um, Or in 2024, because it's about to be that anyways. (laughs) uh, Go to their shows, buy merch, share posts, share videos, like videos, and um, yeah. Yep, that about sums it up. That's all the things you're supposed to say there. I, I just make everybody say it because I feel like it needs to be said. A lot of people just think that like streaming music is like the extent of their interaction with music or whatever, and that that's cool. I guess like they go to shows too, but like, yeah, you, you got to go yeah. a little bit deeper to actually show some love to, to independent yeah. musicians. Buy merch. If you just stream their music, buy merch. Yeah. 
definitely. That's what I'm saying. Because yeah. maybe they don't have uh, physicals, but generally that's how you make money on tour or doing a show. So. I mean, I know that it's like a really weird, like new age thing. And that like some of my old head friends look at me crazy for buying digital music, but like you can also buy digital music guys. It does give money right to the artist. It's, it's just as good as giving somebody five bucks for coffee. Like, um, that's a way to support people can buy yeah. digital music too. So I encourage that, uh, and do it through yep. Bandcamp while, while Bandcamp is still, I don't know. And, and pay more. Yeah. And pay more for it. Like oh, if yeah. it's like five bucks, give them twenty bucks. Yeah, there you go. I agree completely. Uh, art is is not cheap to make, particularly, and and it's also time consuming. And so a lot of people are trying to balance between like how do I work a job and also have time to be artistic and like have the energy to be artistic. You know, after coming home from work and shit. Um, yeah, well, you're not very active on social media. Where can people find you? Um, if you uh, look up Touch182 um, on YouTube, that's where uh, most people should be landing if they want to see my new stuff. Um, I don't, at this point, as we discussed in the beginning, I don't separate my music from my videos. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically... If I, you know, back growing up, you would bootleg people's shit and you have dub tapes. I'm cool. Hey, if you want to rip my shit off YouTube. Uh, well, I'd prefer not go, to have to do that ahead. in order to play it on my fucking radio mm. show, man. But <laughs> but I, I am an underground artist at, you know, so if you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Until I pop up. Right. So I, being from hip hop, I get it and I encourage it, you know, when I give you something, um, just buy it. Right. You know? Um, yeah, man. I mean, like even earlier today, I was thinking about how, like what you're doing with putting music on YouTube, uh, with the video and having it unavailable anywhere else, mm -hmm. them like, that's gotta be a conscious model, right? Yes, like, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably smart. I think uh, because Spotify is not paying people a ton of money anyways, you might as well try it. Like I know on YouTube, I think it's like, I don't know if it's 10,000 or 1,000 hours. There's some hour mark where once a channel has more than that many hours watched, it can be monetized or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you might as well at least like try to build on one platform Rather yeah, than like spread it all out across a ton of them, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I, I need to concentrate it right now. And YouTube is the most, um, makes the most sense for me mm -hmm. because um, I, well, the video I element. don't, yeah, I don't separate the video element. Like, like I write the track right after I make the beat, I write the track while I'm recording. I'm thinking of the video while I'm mixing. I'm thinking of the video in the middle of mastering. I'm renting video equipment. Get once I have the video equipment back, I finish the master. I shoot the video and it's out in the next couple of days. Yeah. Right. So it's one process for me. So these songs you've put on YouTube, are they a few days worth of process? Like once yeah. you start making a beat, you're writing yeah. to it and recording to it. Yeah. you know that same session or the next day or whatever or like really focused yeah. on it yeah that's dope man yeah a couple of years ago i put out like a bunch of stuff and they, i just had like my album art which which that's what i was focusing on i was like okay i need to be able to make album art but what i would do is make a track and get it up in one day right so i did like i don't know 10 or 12 of those before in december a couple of years ago and that got me in shape for what i'm doing now right. basically yeah got to uh go to the mental gym and uh <laughs> lift weights every once in a while exactly right? yeah exactly. yeah all right man uh, well that's um that's all the questions i had for you i really appreciate you doing this and shit man yeah man and uh i did get my um ig hacked a few weeks ago okay um so it's uh it's different now so my ig is it's touch 182 so its touch 182 
Okay. Um, I'll make I sure got no, I got like no followers anymore. So I need, you know, all that I can get. So holler. <laughs> we should definitely find that. Um, you got all sorts of music. Uh, easy to find you. Yeah, Touch 182. Yeah. And there's some photography up there too. If you're one of those people. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I think that this is the longest flying formation I've done with a single guest. I've had some come nice. up around two hours, but um, appreciate you hanging out this long, man. I had fun talking to you. It's been yeah, too long since man. we uh, last got to slap hands. So yeah, man. Uh, yeah, man. If you're ever down anytime. in Lethbridge, let me know. All right, man. Anytime. Thank All you, right, man. Thank you. All right. Peace. Peace. All right, everybody, thanks for watching for so long. Uh, that was fun, and um, that'll be all for me. I'm beat, but uh, make sure you go check out the After the Smoke is Clear mixes. That's my mix show where I play independent hip-hop every week. Uh, it's like 95% Canadian content every week, and um, it's mixed by my friends DJ Dice or DJ Baggy Lean. Most of the time, sometimes I still take mixing duties but uh yeah you should definitely tap in if you enjoy supporting independent canadian hip-hop uh mixcloud.com slash dubious is where you can find that or just dubious.com that's down in that corner someplace and um yeah that's the hub for everything that i do i appreciate y'all for coming by uh next week on november 14th i'm continuing the Fly Information interviews by talking to Just Jordan. Uh, he's an MC and podcaster up in Edmonton as well. Uh, and then November 21st, I talked to two artists here in Lethbridge, uh, Donnie Sage and Alchemy the Linguist. Uh, they've been putting out a lot of music lately and doing a lot of shows, doing dope stuff for the local scene. So I'm looking forward to talking to them. And then uh, two Mississauga-based artists ending out the November schedule, November 28th. It's run and gun for Fly Information. So I'm looking forward to all of those and uh, hope people come on by for Tuesday nights.